It's Friday, May 31st, so you know what that means. It is officially official visit season. You are Locked On Gators, your daily podcast on the Florida Gators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Locked On Gators, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Gators your first listen of the day. We are available daily and free wherever you listen to podcasts and on YouTube. Happy Friday. I'm Brandon Olson. Find me on Twitter at WNS underscore Brandon. Find all my written work with the Giants, Country, and NFL 33. If you're not part of the Lockdown Gators Subtext Insider Program, you should be. The link's in the description below to join that and get involved and get inside. Joining me now for Locked On Gators is Brian Smith, Locked On's Recruiting Insider. And before we get into it, I'd like to thank LinkedIn Jobs for being the official college football recruiting sponsor across the Locked On College Network. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates that you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions apply. And Brian, it's the most wonderful time of the year. It, it's official visit time. And right. I, I do have to ask, before we even talk about any specific players, how important is it to, to kind of nail this first official visit weekend? Because – I think a lot of people look at that first official visit or any player's first official visit, we'll say, not just necessarily this weekend, but any player's first official visit. I feel like when we talk about that, we go, oh, you're getting the first visit. That's good for you. That shows that that they're prioritizing you. But also you have to do enough to leave a lasting impression through any and all other official visits that these kids will go on. Yeah, it's feast or famine on either end of this. Some people want the last visit. Well, what if you don't get there and another kid along the way, you know, you like you're waiting on him, but he commits somewhere else. Like you can lose everybody that way too. So it goes both directions, but at least you get the kid on campus with the first visit and you have a chance to talk to him one-on-one on on your turf. So Florida is an easy place to sell as a visit. I'm sure most people listen to this podcast have been to the university of Florida or attended it. Great campus tradition, the swamp, all that. I think they're one of the few schools that can get kids to commit just with that visit because it's a great place to be. So I wouldn't be surprised if a few kids from this weekend, because it's happened traditionally, Florida will get kids to commit and other people didn't expect. Happened last year too. So why not again in 2024? Yeah, uh, I think that I'm typically thinking like, hey, you know, first visit's nice, but like I said, you have to last, you have to make a lasting impression through all the other official visits. But this staff has found decent success with these summer visits. There was one weekend last year where you look at the offer list or you look at who is on campus visiting, and like 70% of that weekend ended up committing to the Florida Gators. And then I think they lost two of them. Uh, but, but they've had success with these summer recruiting visits and these official visits early on. One of the names that's going to be on campus is one of the more talked about names, I think, through Florida Gators fans, which is quarterback Antoine Hill. And uh, I, I think we've talked about him before, but just to circle back to it, what do you think of him as a quarterback one for a recruiting class in 2025? The arm strength is ridiculous. He's a big kid. He's 220, 6'5", 6'6". Really mature, easygoing guy when you talk to him. Yes, sir, no, sir. Typical Deep South guy. So all those things are fine. He just needs a ton of work technically. Uh, his his footwork, et cetera, needs a lot of work because he's not consistent. But if anything else, his arm is so strong, he has to take something off of it. Like he has that kind of arm. And if you take him as quarterback one, that's fine, but he's a developmental player. Long term, he could be an NFL guy or he could be a guy that doesn't start for it. It's a boomer bust prospect. I, I root for those kind of kids, though, because he's just a great kid. He's at the high school in his town that's the least tradition rich. He didn't transfer. He does all the right things. So I'm curious what schools end up taking him for an official visit. I know Memphis has been involved. I don't know who else he's going to visit. But Florida, I mean, they need they need quarterbacks. So, you know, not easy after what they got last year to get a QB. So I wonder if that's part of their problem. It's You know, it is what it is. But he's a guy that has – some people intrigued and I've seen him three, four times 
Sometimes he's good, sometimes he's not. But man, what an arm! Yeah, I, I like that you mentioned what Florida did last year because that was my next question for the Florida Gators. Just is there a difficulty to add a blue chip quarterback to the 2025 recruiting class with DJ Lagway, especially with all of the hype that's around DJ Lagway? You talk about this spring game and Florida Gators fans are like, oh my God, the offense is more spread out with DJ Lagway when he was on the field. He was throwing some pretty damn good balls out there. He's on a national Gatorade commercial during game four of the Western Conference finals. Like, like you look at anything, the University of Florida based for 2020, even 2024, he's a backup and 2025 and beyond. It's DJ Lagway. If you're an opposing, or not even opposing, but if you're a quarterback in this 2025 class, you're just like, that's what I have to compete with? Like, like, like how difficult does that make it for Florida? I would think it'd be hard because most kids will not wait beyond their sophomore year to play. He would still be on campus. It's got to be a kid that's okay with redshirting and waiting till at least his third year. There aren't a lot of those guys running around. So – this might be a situation where they strike out at quarterback and it just is what it is, but you got DJ Lagway. Sometimes there's awkward circumstances. that's out of your control. And I know Billy gets a lot of heat for different things. This wouldn't be one of them. He got anything that he deserved. When you sign a five-star possible top 10 kid at quarterback, the next class, it's hard. You need kind of a shoe in a guy that just always wanted to go to Florida or something like that. Otherwise it's going to be hard to get somebody. Yeah. And uh, you mentioned Memphis before. It feels like Memphis is kind of the the public favorite right now for Antoine Hill. You know, they, they have their like big FedEx NIL package coming in and all of a sudden they started popping up for a lot of kids. For Antoine Hill, there there's probably an opportunity to play early for him, whether or not he deserves it and whether or not that would actually be good for his development. But if you're the Florida Gators, how do you sell him when, when you're competing against you can play early, and every time we talk about any recruit, we go, yeah, you don't want to sit past your sophomore year. That's not easy, man. The only thing I can say is you can sell the development and playing in the SEC. There's a difference between the Swamp and wherever it is Memphis plays. I have no idea what their stadium name I have no clue, and I don't care. It's not a Power 5 program. They have no shot at a title, so I'm not interested in that. And that's what you're going to sell if you're Billy. You should. If you don't want to be a part of this and take your time, Good luck at Memphis. That's honestly what I would tell him. And again, I like Hill. He's a nice kid. It's always nice to me. But no offense, that's not the same level of football. If you're going to earn a chance to play for Florida, you're probably going to have to wait longer. Take it or leave it. Yeah, uh, and if I'm Billy Napier, I'm I'm showing him the Anthony Richardson highlight film. And I'm just like, hey, we did it. He was bad when he went to the NFL, but we had a fourth overall pick here. So we, we've got the guy here that – uh that we can kind of use as the selling point, but Hey, I'm, I'm not on the coaching staff and they get paid a hell of a lot more money than I do to do this. Uh, so I, I'll be as critical as I can be. Game time makes getting NBA finals tickets even faster and easier prices on the game time app actually go down the closer that it gets to tip off. And with killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guaranteed. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying NBA tickets, but not just NBA tickets. Oh, no, no, no. I say nay, nay. You can get MLB tickets, NFL. Last year, I went to go watch Florida um, definitely not lose to Arkansas using game time. I bought those tickets like three days before the game. Um, great, great price, by the way. I was sitting front row in the end zone where Arkansas scored the game-winning touchdown and where Trey Smack missed that field goal. Broke my damn heart. Broke my heart. Uh, game time. And then I watched, yeah, and then I watched the Phillies throw six perfect innings against the Mets a couple weeks ago. Game time has been really productive for me. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app. Create an account and use code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. Terms do apply. Again, Create an account, redeem code locked on college for $20 off your first purchase. Terms you apply, download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. Flipping to the defensive side of the ball for the rest of today's show, linebacker Christian Gass is going to be on campus this weekend as well. What do you think of him and his film? I loved his film. He's a kid that I contacted, somebody that I know lives pretty close to him. I'm like, 
Why isn't this kid ranked higher? His speed, his ability to anticipate, his lateral movement. He plays just outside of Atlanta. He plays pretty good competition. I don't understand. I know Auburn likes him and Georgia and all these other schools looking at like he's got a lot of talent, but his ranking didn't match. I'm, I'm assuming that it's on the rise. So Florida and Auburn want you. It's probably a good sign. You know, it's not like they want for defensive prospects very much. I think that this is a kid that can play early, even at, at a UF, even at an LSU or a Bama. I think by his sophomore year, he could be in the rotation for about any school in the country. And he could also do it at multiple spots, maybe outside backer, maybe will, maybe pass rusher. He could be a versatile kid. And those guys never go out of style. Yeah, I was curious about how long you think he would need to be playing time ready. And I mean, significant snaps, not just special teams or, or garbage time, because Florida will also have, I mean, the transfer portals, I think. So Florida should also have in 2025, Paul Howard, Miles Graham, Aaron Childs, and Jaden Robinson from the 2023 class as well, all on roster. So how long do you think it would kind of take for Christian Gass to be eased in with all this also young talent at linebacker that Florida has? I think he would just be a guy that has to earn it. I think he could pass some guys up. Like they got really good linebackers in this past class. That was a really good linebacker group. But that doesn't mean they're going to have – just an easy way of it. This kid's really good too. He would come down to playbook probably how quickly he picked it up. Cause physically there's no guess. He's got all kinds of talent. Again, he could play multiple spots. I think he could be an H back tight end kind of guy too. There's all kinds of ways you could use him. I think they'll find a way to rotate him in when Florida would think it has been great. They've done that anyway, historically rotate a lot of front seven defenders, stay fresh and kill teams in the fourth quarter. So uh, that would be my guess. How does it feel knowing that for the foreseeable future, every time you talk about a defensive player, you're going to talk about Florida, Auburn, and Georgia just all in the mix? Because I feel like the defensive systems are, are fairly similar. I mean, Ron Roberts helped establish the defense at Auburn, and, and now he's at Florida, and, and he kind of helped even usher in the modern era of defense when he was back at Delta State. So just how's it feel knowing that every time you're just going to have to talk about the same player with the, or the same type of player with the same school? I think that it's a good thing because there's a little more congru congruency. I mean, so many teams are trying to figure out how they want to run their hybrid defense, but because personnel packages do not dictate how teams line up anymore, 22 personnel used to be all power. Now it could be four wide and one person in the backfield you got to be versatile and ready to shift your entire defense at a moment's notice. So if you don't have versatile players and like guys like Roberts have tried to figure out, it's not going to work well for you. Even Michigan, like has completely changed. Like, let's be honest, Jim Harbaugh is a rather stubborn individual. Their defense became multiple. They came up with different ways to use players in the back end and the front end. That's what you're seeing with Florida, Auburn, and everybody else too. A lot of different blitz packages being aggressive because you have to. So I, I look at kids when I scout them, like, hey, can you get after the quarterback even if you're a safety? Because you got to blitz anymore because teams are so good at moving the ball. You need negative plays. You're not going to just play cloud coverage all day and win. It does. It doesn't work that way anymore. So I like it actually. It's more fun to talk about all the possibilities of where a young man could play as opposed to okay, he's just a defensive end, it's just a boundary corner, whatever. What are the versatile points that this young man has? Yeah, uh, I, I like it too. I feel like it adds a level of like Florida doesn't play Auburn frequently at all, but I feel like Florida fans and Auburn fans are now kind of constantly jabbing each other because they're always dealing with these. Like Zach Blackerby, our our boss with Locked On Auburn, his Discord, they tag me all the time when when Auburn lands a kid or is expected to land a kid that Florida is also recruiting. Where they they just tag me to talk a little talk a little trash because we we have that I guess going on in the recruiting trail we constantly see it and last year auburn took a couple guys from florida right now florida florida is is trying to take a couple guys from auburn and malik Autry and tavares dice um but back to christian gas how would you look at him compared to a guy like tavian wallace who is one of the more popular linebacker recruits among skaters fans uh personally i mean we've talked about tavian wallace before i think we're both pretty high on his film as well so how would you compare the two, not necessarily, you know, head to head, but just 
as far as in this linebacker class? I don't think there's a huge difference. To be honest with you, I think they're both kids that can play anywhere, Georgia included. That's the easiest way to put it. I know Florida fans hate me mentioning Georgia, but that's the standard right now, whether you want to admit it or not. I don't think they'd have a problem. They can run. They can cover. They can hit. They can play multiple spots. Check, please. Sometimes I know people get caught up in rankings. Again, for whatever reason, Gas's ranking and his notoriety was low to start out. I don't know if he didn't go to any camps last year. Or whatever, that's a big deal. Like guys want to see players live before they rank them sometimes. Some of these guys are my friends. There's no fixing that. But like he lives just outside Atlanta. He's played against good competition and his film is really good. So I, I don't think there's a huge difference between the two players. Yeah, there was a report that came out a couple of days ago or earlier this week. And it was about Mike Norvell. And apparently when they talk about recruits, he doesn't allow uh, his assistant coaches to bring up their star rankings in, in, in meetings, uh, which I don't believe, but I, I would love that idea to just go, I don't give a damn about the stars. Just find me good football players and the, the people getting paid six and seven figures should, or now some guys getting paid eight figures. I'm going to take their opinion more than uh more than that of guys that, that don't make, as much to do that uh, and don't have their jobs really depending on being right about things. The last player to talk about is going to be Caleb Singleton. What is your opinion of his film? He's a kid that's got some upside, but the first thing I look at with anybody that can play free safety, corner, nickel, what are the measurables? Uh, the raw physical tools at corner, in particular, the mo- it's the most important of any position because you're out there by yourself a lot. And if you fail, it's a touchdown. So you need to have the physical makeup speed and all that. I think he's a little underrated. Uh, I liked his film. And I thought he's a kid that's got some pretty good length. I mean, his brother plays at Florida State. He, he's a good football player. And he, Sam can really run. I don't know if this kid's done growing. I don't know if he could maybe transition to safety. But I think there's – versatility in him as well. Just like we were talking about gas. If you can play multiple spots, if you can be helpful in nickel, etc., there's more credibility to your ranking going up and you going up on the board. So now the question is, where would Florida like him? If he could only pick one spot, is he a boundary? Is he a nickel? How do you look at it? Cause I think he has the length to play any of them. I don't, I don't know. I want to see his senior film and if, see if he takes that next step. Cause I thought the light started to come on last year as a junior. Yeah, I like that you mentioned where does Florida see him because we, we know at this point in time, or at least what they're telling him, uh, is that Florida likes him as a safety, but they think he can play corner. And I, I don't know if I'm just going crazy with here or if I'm just putting on a tinfoil hat. I feel like every single time we talk about a kid and we go, yeah, they like him at safety, but he can play corner. They just wind up playing star, which is fine. Star, star is, I think – like I've said before, the most difficult position to play outside of quarterback. I think it's incredibly difficult. I've played corner. I've played safety. I've tried to play star. I could not do it. That was, you got to be built different to hang in that in there. Um, but I feel like every time we talk about a kid, about, yeah, he could play safety, but they also like him at corner. It really just translates to, he's probably going to be a nickel long-term. Those kids that can do it though, they got to be tough. That's part of the physical maturity because you're playing against a tight end sometimes. I don't know a DB that's going to win a lot of battles against a tight end in a blocking situation. So it's your middle makeup. How well do you take that next play after you're getting your butt handed to you by a guy that weighs 250 and you're 180? Again, those aren't going to go well. So that's a mental thing as much as physical. And then the other part, are you willing to blitz? Are you willing to be a part of that run package as a nickel defender? It's a different deal. You're right. It's the hardest physically on the field. It's awful. I think he might be able to, but again, I want to see him play as a senior because I don't think he's even close to done as a developed prospect. Caleb's a good player, but I think the ceiling's pretty good. So we'll, we'll see. Yeah, I feel like the Florida Gators right now are considered public favorites and have been for a little bit. We know that they're pushing relatively hard. Will Harris and Caleb Singleton have a pretty good relationship to this point. Him being on campus, hopefully he's one of those kids where you go, oh, we weren't expecting him to commit yet, and he does. But there may have been a little bit of a wrench thrown in the plan as earlier this week. Michigan offered Caleb Singleton. So if you're Florida, how much does that kind of 
turn the pressure up to land a commitment because he doesn't have an official visit set with Michigan at all yet. But how much does that kind of turn the pressure up on you to to land this commitment and try to prevent him from having an official visit with Michigan? Just because, like, like Michigan just went fifteen and zero, and, and they had Mike Sainer still get drafted early second round, if I'm not mistaken. Hell of a player at nickel. I, I feel like they've got a lot going their way if they wanted to grab a guy that they can play in the nickel long term. And Mike Sainer still was a small dude there. He, he just played out there with just tenacity. So for Florida, how much does the pressure kind of kick up now to land him before Michigan even competes? I think it goes up a lot. I think it's very hard to recruit to Michigan right now. I'd imagine not, especially on defense. But at the same time, they did lose their entire defensive staff. So there is that. Um, you don't want kids taking visits if they're a priority and you got them on campus first and your state you. Florida has a chance to knock this out of the park. I don't know this young man's timeline. Uh, Singleton's a kid that could end up, you know, getting some more offers too. It's possible. But if you're Florida, yeah, you got to try to get him to commit. You, you don't want him taking like Michigan or Georgia or Texas. Who knows who's going to offer next? You just don't know. You know, that's that's why this, if you're going to get him in early, you need, to, you need to hit it out of the park. Yeah, and hopefully Florida makes some waves this weekend. Thanks so much, Brian. This is Brian Smith, Lockdown's Recruiting Insider. Catch him every week in Lockdown Gators and catch him all throughout the Lockdown College Channel, especially during official visit season. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, sir. Thanks for making Lockdown Gators your first listen of the day. We are available daily and free reviews in the podcast. Thanks again to Brian Smith, Lockdown's Recruiting Insider. We will be back maybe this weekend if there's some news. I'm just saying. Just saying. For Lockdown Gators, I'm Brandon Olson. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at WNS underscore Brandon. Find all my written work with Giants Country and NFL 33, and I will see you all next time.